All right, you guys, because I can't hold it in anymore, because I want to talk about it so bad, we are digging immediately into the 4chan topic. Okay. So, uh, in this video, right, we did the recap last time where we went over quite a few new um, 4chan posting, some related to it, uh, potential ways that the crime could have went down. Now, all week, I have been researching and searching for um, correlating evidence, all right? And, and there's a whole bunch out there. And this... We never went through all of this the first time we went through this a few months ago. So I found it really interesting because one of my goals tonight was to lay out uh, a best guess timeline, right? And I think that's something that investigators try to do when they're trying to understand what could have happened that night, right? I have no idea if this is really what happened, but I do feel like it has the potential to hold water. I okay. do. And I think a lot of other people do too. And I think that's why it's important to dig into this because look, the whole goal in any theory, in any hypothesis, in any, anything that you're trying to come up with is to scrutinize the heck out of it. Right. Right. Yeah. I want people to scrutinize. I am hoping that our thought writers out there uh, are are putting their minds to it and trying to figure out just how this could have went down. Okay. So number one, we we know we're we're just going to focus on Zana and Ethan. Okay. We know that they went over to Sigma Chi that night, right? Mm -hmm. We know that they were there roughly at about 9 p.m. And what's interesting is we know that, I think, based off of uh, their cell phones and um, the, uh, uh, the video footage, because from everything that I could find, they walked there, which makes sense, right? Um, why wouldn't they walk there? If I was in college and... I knew I was going to be drinking. Uh, I knew I was going to be partying. I knew I was going to be hanging out. And, uh, you know, the walk is minutes away from where I live. There's no reason not to walk there. And at, as I'm talking through some of these, we'll be looking at some pictures and I'll, I'll post them on the screen for you guys. So for anybody new here that just heard about our 4chan theory um not ours but in general the 4chan frat boy theory last week um or two weeks ago uh this is the map of how close it is if you can see here that is literally a hop skip and a jump away you're talking one house two house cross the road bam sigma chi where they were at that night yep it is so close you know, it is so close. That was weird. Um, so everything that I could tell is it's just a five minute walk away. Okay. So at 9 p.m., we know they were there. Now I've searched everywhere to find anything having to do with the fight. We we know that fight happened that night. Uh, multiple parents were told about it that night. Victims' family members confirmed that they knew about it that night. Um, and uh, But I can't find anywhere roughly what time that happened. Did it happen at the end of the night, right before they went home, and they were like, you know what, let's get out of here. I'm over it, you know? Or did it happen earlier in the night where people were allowed to sit and brew for a while? Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, you know, an interesting thing um, that was added in my mind to this whole dynamic here, um, which I, I don't know if it's relevant or not, but supposedly if you want to believe the Steve uh, and Brad Norton leaked text messages, um, Steve says that Hunter and a girl walked Xana and Ethan home that night. Yeah. Which is interesting because that to me gives me the impression that 
a fight happened yeah. and his brother walked him home. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because why walk him home? No, like, they're I, because adults. then you just have to walk back. Like the yeah. couple that walked with them that just has to walk back. So why not just let them walk in the first yeah, place? It's anyways? so close. Yeah. It's no, so I close. Agree. Like there's no reason to walk him home. It makes sense going with the fight. Okay. Yeah. Is like something just went down, walk, getting your brother out of there, walking him home, making sure he's okay. You know, like that makes sense to me. Now, you know, what's interesting is we've been told, and I agree with you, uh, but you know, what's interesting is we've been told that around 1 a.m. Uh, they were home. Okay. I found a lot of contradicting statements from that. Again, these are just statements, you guys. It's not like I have a video of them. It's not like I have anything that is 100% set in concrete fact. This is what time they got home. But there's a lot of statements out there saying that they didn't get home till like 145. Oh, I heard there's even things talking about them getting home earlier than that. Like, but way before midnight. I don't. Oh, I didn't hear anything that's way before midnight uh, because she had talked to her dad and she wasn't at home at that time. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it, like midnight. Uh, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. We're, we're trying to piece this thing together here. We got our cork board out and we're placing the dots, you know. Um, but uh, what's interesting to me is that that time frame allows... Like, let's say they really got home at 145, okay? And that crime happened between 2 to 430. That's pretty close right after. So if I'm a horrible criminal uh, and I'm wanting to do this thing, is that enough time to, one, confirm that they got home, two, get ready to do what you plan on doing? Hmm. You know what I mean? Now, you know what else is interesting that I, I wasn't even sure if I was going to bring this up. Um, you're just going to have to believe me on it because I don't think that I have. I don't think I can pull it up here. Um, OK, but uh, for everyone else, I will post it. That kind of just tells you who he was because, you know, he wasn't tied to everyone in that room. Ethan wasn't supposed to even be there. And, you know, from what. Ethan went through, you know, that this guy just wasn't a man of character. He was just poorly built. And, uh, you know, there isn't going to be some kind of connection that I, I would say, I would think that would explain this. Like behavior could explain somebody being this brutal to another human being. I mean, he was probably obsessed with just their overall looks and their social media accounts and the fact that they were close. So there is an interview where Steve Gonsalves says verbally that, uh, you know, I, I, I just can't believe what, ha how it happened to Ethan, like putting a massive emphasis on the injuries that Ethan received. Hmm. Which feels like supporting evidence for a situation where maybe, there was some kind of fight and Ethan was involved. You know, that that kind of reminds me of Annie Elise's statement from the FBI leak uh, that she got that like his legs were slashed and stuff. Yep. Um, I know. Hmm. I know. Yeah, it, it just it that gave me the impression that Ethan was targeted in a way to make him not able to fight back because he is such a big man, you know, mm -hmm. um, he's the biggest threat in that house against another man. Yeah, uh, when it comes to fighting back, so <clears throat> I mean, it just is what it is, you know, a woman against you know a, a man. It, when it comes to like hand to hand combat like that, it's, it's no contest, you know, especially I, if you're, you're small, which all of those girls were. Yeah, I know it.
I know. It's a really strange situation. Ethan's a threat for somebody who wants to come in and attack them. Oh, well, yeah, of course. And and Ethan wasn't uh, a small guy either. No, so. he was a very, very big guy. Like, yep. he was very tall. Yep, yep. So, uh, all right, we're going to continue answering some questions. So let's let's just say, okay, they get home around one forty-five, between one and 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 one forty-five. Okay, that's roughly what I've heard. Um, now, when we're looking at the four chan posts, we have a general outline of the story that. Uh, three or four people uh, were at the house. We don't know if four people went in and each person had a target or if two people went in and uh, two people were on watch. We we don't know for sure which one of those it could be. Both of them were talked about um, probably because the poster wasn't there unless the poster was involved. But what's interesting for everyone else, and I didn't post this on the last video we we did, but uh, you know it, that gives them between one to one forty-five. Okay, and what's interesting is the next piece of evidence we have is the four people running across in front of the police car, which happens right at three twelve a.m., which would put if we're listening to the 4chan posts, it's roughly 20 minutes is what they gave them in the 4chan posts, um, where two people went in, did what they did, uh, disrobed, whatever, changed how they needed to, and then walked back to uh, this direction. Whether they had a car or whether it was Sigma Chi, we, we don't know, okay? But it's roughly right at that, uh, that, that, 150 mark. So that would put the crime beginning if 4chan's real roughly at 150 to 2 a.m. What if they're walking back? At I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 250. I'm sorry. 250. Yeah. 250. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Um. You know, I have a theory with what, um, Stacy Chapin said about 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. is a dark time. I wonder if sh that is the last proof of life. Like that oh, is man. the last time she knew he was awake and alive. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he sent her a text like I love you or maybe he was doing something on his phone and then after that he was asleep. Mm -hmm. That So that was the last time he was like conscious and aware and alive you know like because if he was attacked in his sleep you know that was the, the last m conscious moments yeah yeah I, yeah it's very possible i i wish i could know that too a lot of people have speculated about that um and it, it's curious for sure. Maybe that's now, when this plan also, she considers that's when this like evil plan went into action. Because regardless of whether you think it was possibly 4chan or Koberger, around 2 something a.m. is when Koberger leaves his house. Yeah. I forget. It's like 2.45 around that time. So, this is a weird one. You know Eyebrows Guy in Banfield. Yep. Saeed. Did you know, and I didn't know this in the first video, did you know that Saeed paid David 2 at 2.13 a.m. that night? Did it say anything? Mm-mm. It was just blank? Yep. 2.13 a.m. Huh. He right around the time that crime and, and things are going on. He paid David 2? Yep, David too. Ooh, that's a weird connection right there. That's we a really saw him strange. in the band field. We saw him in the band field. I know, and he's not Sigma Chi. No, but Saeed is. Uh, he has a lot of tech experience. A lot. Interesting, right? Now, here's another piece of evidence, too, you guys. So we're we're roughly up to where we saw them go across uh, the front, right, at, at 312. Um, in my opinion, the, the people that we see run across that light 
they're wearing pretty baggy clothes is what it looks like. Looks you like they're to, all wearing hoods. They, it does look like they're all wear, wearing hoods. And I will have put it across the screen for everyone. Um, but it's interesting. Now, another interesting piece that I, I think it's really interesting because I think it can add weight to it when it could be someone who's been touched by this crime, looking at this situation and also seeing some validity here is the, the Kara Northington or, or Kara Kernodal, right? So Zana's birth mother uh, had come out and said that, Hey, I find it really interesting. You know what? some of the the things that went on at Sigma Chi, and I believe that there should be some kind of investigation into them. Mm -hmm. It just shows there's questions there. You know what I mean? There are questions going on there. With Sigma Chi being five minutes away, with it being uh, involved in, with uh, Ethan being involved with Sigma Chi, with these two guys that had a problem with Ethan that were in Sigma Chi, I mean... It it really well in a fight it, in night. a fight. It really connects very easily. And I know there's a lot of people out there that believe Brian Koberger is guilty that despise these 4chan posts. But look, like we've got to be objective. We've got to be object objective. And again, ev a lot of people seem to put us in the bucket of like, oh, you know, they're they're just trying to prove Brian Koberger is innocent because we question everything. And that's just not the case. Um, I, I have no idea. He could totally be involved in this. I, I have no idea whatsoever. He could be the writer of this. I, I think it's pretty unlikely. But is it plausible? Anything's plausible. You know what I mean? So um, I mean I think it's possible. I don't I don't find it impossible, but I find it extremely highly unlikely Koberger could have written the four champions. Yeah, I, I do too, but it, I need to be honest about what is plausible here. And I, I do think that it that it's possible. You know, character um, analysis had an interesting alternating theory in that Papa Rogers is law enforcement toying with Koberger because they know Koberger is tech savvy and is possibly leaking things to the internet like the 4chan posts and they're messing with him. It, it was an interesting theory. Take it with, you know. Yeah. Take it how you want. Um, but I found it interesting because I've always, I have felt for a long time that Papa Rogers was law enforcement. Me too. Me too. So after that 312, okay, and I know I'm kind of bouncing back and forth here. Hopefully you guys are following along okay. Um, we don't see any more after that, okay, until uh, the madness begins and they start investigating. And, uh, you know, tempers are running. Um, people are complaining. The national mainstream media was calling out police. Uh, and for the entire first two weeks from November 13th on, Everybody that was talking online believed that law enforcement was looking in the direction of the frat. Even law enforcement was putting out like this here. From the beginning, Moscow detectives have asked for any and all video from residents and businesses within the area of West Taylor Avenue, northbound, West Palouse River Drive, uh, Highway 95 South, 2700 block, Highway 95 South, Arbitorium and Botanical Gardens who have video surveillance at their residence or business between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Um, Sunday, November 19th. Detectives requesting all avail available video. When you pull that up on the map, that is right around that Sigma Chi area where people uh, with the 4chan theory wondered if they left and went to the Palouse river area or the bo i'm sorry arboretum botanical gardens area but then koberger comes okay and and brian koberger comes at the end of november from what everyone suspects that that he got picked up at the end of november and they started focusing on him and then all of a sudden the investigation investigation took a sharp left turn and he became the guy and any of this investigation was dropped. Now, what's interesting is from most accounts that we've heard, 
uh, the the fraternity were not talking with police. They aren't allowed to. They have to get approval to do anything like that. So um, they weren't actively working with police in the way that the statement that the uh, the fraternity dude where Brian Etten approached him made it seem like. Meantime, police asking the public to help them fill in key gaps in the timeline the night that four students were stabbed to death as the investigation continues in Moscow, Idaho. Now, part of that timeline includes a party at a fraternity house where investigators believe Zana and Ethan were at some point before they returned home. Senior national correspondent Brian Inton is live in Moscow. And Brian, you spoke with the president of the Sigma Chi fraternity house. Yeah, Nicole, this was our very first time uh, speaking with the president of that fraternity. You know, they've really been under the microscope because we know two of the victims were at that fraternity house a short time uh, before the murders. The president says they are fully cooperating with the police. The flag is at half staff at the University of Idaho Sigma Chi fraternity house. The last place victims Anna Kronodal and Ethan Chapin were seen alive, according to police. For the first time, we are hearing from the fraternity's president. I knew them. Um, Ethan was always in our house. Anna was a good friend before you know Ethan even came up. Um, but that's all I really want to talk about right now because I actually have class here in like 15 minutes. Sigma Chi President Reed Offson says the fraternity is cooperating with the investigation. The fraternity is about half a block from the house where the murders happened. Does anyone know where they were during that timeline? Like there's still this big chunk where... Um, as of right now, we've told Moscow PD, Idaho State Police and the FBI all we know. Um, we're kind of leaving it up to them to piece it together. Obviously, we don't have the utilities or uh, resources to do it on our own, so we're just putting full faith in the officers uh, and in the detectives doing it. Um, but that's all I do right now. Are there any cameras around? Uh, not on the phone. Bosco police say they are investigating the time frame between 9 p.m. the night before the murders on November 12th and 1.45 a.m. when Ethan and Zana were believed to be at the Sigma Chi house. Meanwhile, detectives are not commenting on whether or not they are making significant progress in the case, only saying they have no suspects identified and will not release information at the risk of compromising the investigation. And we have learned that starting tomorrow, police will go into the house behind me, which is still a crime scene, and start removing some of the personal items that belong uh, to the victims. They say they want to return those items to the families. Nicole. All right. Oh, yeah. So every fraternity, every Sigma Chi statement I have seen made, which David, too, made one on his Twitter. Um, the president has made statements on it of Sigma Chi. There's been a couple statements. Out. There's been a few. Um, they have said every time they have fully cooperated with police. Now, what does that look like? I don't know, because they don't define what that means. Um, th they don't say, well, yeah, we allowed them in the frat house and we allowed them to search. Uh, we gave them every bit of, you know, we gave them our phones. We let them download all of our phones. Like, you know, they don't define what that means. Like, is fully cooperating just saying, here's my alibi? Yeah. Yeah. Or are you genuinely offering up any information you can to help? Yeah. Because I can see them cooperating enough to, to satisfy police, but, you know, not allowing them to, like, you know, download the frat members' phones. Yeah. No, like having I, their legal counsel say that's agreed. where we draw the line until you get a warrant for arrest or something. Yeah. You know, or something like that. No, I, I agree with you. And and here's an interesting point, too. And I know we touched on this quite a bit in our first video, but a lot of people wonder, OK, so let me this is just theory land. OK, I'm going to lay out a theory here. We know Scott Green was in the war room every morning, right? Mm hmm. We know that he was meeting with the chief of police every morning to go over what steps they were taking in the investigation. Okay. So was he leading them away from Sigma Chi? In a good faith way, though. Everyone always automatically assumes when something is being done wrong that it's a bad faith. Like he's walking in there and like, hey, Fry, you can't look into the fraternities. You know, you can't look into the Greek life. They give me too much money. Uh, I don't think it's something like that. I think that and we've seen this time and time again, you guys, from from a lot of viewers is 
they're just a bunch of stupid frat guys that are drunk all the time. That's How what everyone know? always says to the 4chan theory is they're a bunch of dumb, drunk frat guys. Like, are you serious? You really think they could pull off the perfect murder? For one, this wasn't perfect. No. Um, and for two, uh, we don't know how much evidence was genuine that genuinely in that house. 113 at a quadruple homicide that spans multiple floors of a home. I'm sorry. And multiple dumpsters and the surrounding area outside. Like yeah. there's so much more evidence I think should have been collected. Like I, that number is, is scary. It is. Um, so I, I don't think it's acceptable. We don't. And the multiple other DNA profiles that they just ran through CODIS and were like, eh, not Coburgers, so we don't have to look into those. Like, right. come on. So uh, them not investigating that DNA makes me feel like they did not exhaust all avenues. I agree with and you. I have to make one more point. Real yeah. Quick. That bias right there that the, oh, I don't feel this is plausible because they're a bunch of dumb, drunk frat guys. I hope the police did not have that bias. We don't want that. We no. do not want our police having bias like that. Like how that one woman, for, I forget her name. Um, uh, uh, gosh, it was almost there. Where she killed her father and stepmother. And this is a long time ago, okay? Uh, literally, like, horribly, brutally. And they were like, we don't think a woman's capable of a murder like this. So she gets off on it. Yep. Because they didn't feel women we're capable of doing something like that. So d be be careful putting f dumb, drunk frat guys in a box like that. I agree with you. I agree with you. These are very fit, in shape, hormonal, uh, angry frat guys. And you don't and know their intelligence. You can't just presume to know how intelligent they are. Yeah. And these frat guys are one in two leave as an addict or an alcoholic. Okay. So it, it, an addict or alcoholic means there's some kind of emotional uh, instability going on or coping skills or the way that they're able to manage these situations that are going on in school now. Okay. So imagine Back to my scenario here, we have Scott Green coming in the war room every day and uh, Fry going through the, the daily plans and like, OK, so, you know, we need to talk to Sigma Chi. We need to get all the video footage around this area. And then you have Scott Green chiming in and saying, hey, Fry, I, I need you to be sure before you pursue these leads like we, we can't make a mistake. You cannot allow a slip to where the public finds out you're looking into the fraternity because I need you to understand here that 75% of all donations given to the college come from the Greek life, come from these fraternities, Fry. You cannot make a mistake here, okay? Is that pressure right there, that good faith but bad mistake pressure right there, enough for the police to be like, uh, let, let, let's prioritize this search over this search. Let's look over here in this field instead of behind the Sigma Chi in this field. Let's talk to this person who's not in the Greek life versus this person over here who is in the Greek life. You know what I mean? How many of those decisions were, were slided one direction because money wasn't, it was a, was a major question and concern. Uh, the Greek life who in our universities in the U S the Greek life are leaders in the student body. Okay. And, and an example of that, that we talked about in a previous video is after the, uh, who was the kid found frozen under why Derek, um, Joseph, why Derek happened. And, and they said it was because he was too intoxicated. So the university put together, uh, a, a group of like, self-policing to reduce any issues with over intoxication or accidents happening in these ways. And you know who was the lead of that group? And you know, who was that group? Hmm. The fraternities and sororities. They were, they're the leaders here in universities 
and are turned to to manage these types of programs in the student body. And that's like what we talked about when we were talking about the history of fraternities where, you know, universities learned a long time ago that you have the president of the university who can't control a student body of tens of thousands of kids, but they can talk to uh, Greek leaders. They can talk to alumni. Those alumni can then talk to the heads of houses in these Greek communities. Those Greek communities can then talk to the brothers and sisters in the communities and so on down, right? It makes sense why that works. Like, I get it. But we also see it causing problems, real problems here. Oh, yeah. And 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 I think that's a very scary number that 75% of all money donated to universities is from the Greek life. 75%. Yeah. You know how many fraternities wouldn't exist anymore if it weren't for that fact? Because universities would have got fed up and kicked them out. Because of how many issues there are with fraternities. Like, we can't deny that fact. I I know. Like, you can't look at the drug trafficking rings and all of the crap fraternities have been involved with. And hazing and murders and death. You can't look at all that stuff and not say there isn't a major issue with fraternities. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. Now, I have some evidence here that could support could lean this way right because i just laid out my theory here what the war room could look like i just made that up just to be very very completely transparent here right but is that a realistic situation where green could be going where he shouldn't have been anyways but just saying going in this war room every day and and saying fry you need to be sure if you're looking into the greek row in the greek community you need to be sure like you cannot make mistakes here with these guys you're you're going to make the college go under which is going to cause your pay to go down which is going to cause us to lose officers and probably lose the whole city if this goes under they they back 75 percent of the money given to the university you know it's a huge chunk of change every year now why Okay, so we we think that Koberger was the focal point, okay? That it's it, it looks like they were looking into the fraternity and this theory for the whole first two weeks. In the end of November, Koberger becomes the focal point. That is also the time they start asking about the white Elantra. As soon as they start asking about the white Elantra, Koberger's the focal point here, okay? Something broke in the case. That, that much is clear. Now, could they have got the Elantra wrong and they're looking into Koberger? Because you know what's interesting is, you know, and I did confirm this, the entire month of December leading up to Brian Koberger's arrest, they they nonstop were pleading for people to come forward and give information on that white Elantra. Okay. If Koberger was the suspect and they're just backfilling this, why would they still be wanting more information on that Elantra? Yeah, I don't know. Because the video footage doesn't clearly show that it's Koberger's, in my opinion. Otherwise, that's what I'm concerned about. Other, it's it's di you guys. It, it's so different for law enforcement to to stay silent versus going out of their way to lie. Mm -hmm. Koberger was was known. At the end of November, the last day of November, why did they continue asking and pleading for help with the white Elantra? They had his name. Yeah, they already knew about the Elantra. I don't think their case is as strong as everyone thinks, you know, uh, we, we went on drunk Turkey, a ton of respect for drunk Turkey. Um, but very different opinions from us oh, to yeah. him. He looks at the case, um, and I don't think he's 100% that Koberger is guilty. I think that more than likely he thinks that. But he looks at the case, and he sees a strong prosecutorial case. I do not. I I have a very hard time understanding how the, pro the, the state's case looks strong. I don't see it. I see things like this where... They're continuing to ask and beg for information on the wrong year Elantra 
um, even though they already had the suspect's well, name um, at, at the end of November, I see um, them not having all the evidence. So like, how could you have a strong case and not have all the evidence? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, the way that people are acting now, that's very subjective. I understand that. And, and to be very clear, that's completely subjective for me to look at Bill Thompson and say, he looks stressed out, but something's changed from the original, uh, you know, it, how we saw him act in the first few hearings versus now something has changed. Okay. But I see all of that and I see a case that's not that strong. Well, for one, the investigation always continues after the arrest because they can dig so much deeper once they have arrested a suspect they can get go through all of his stuff they can go through i mean they like you like they can get the buccal swab they can start going through his phone they can start going through all of his devices um so i do think but what did a it lot, take to get that because it doesn't sound like the car was evidence i do think a lot right right i do think they do a lot after an arrest. And I do think that there's going to be a lot more evidence when it comes to things like that, like metadata, like all of the stuff on his devices and all that. But <clears throat> with the car specifically, that is really interesting. And also when they did the press conference announcing that Brian Koberger was arrested, they still were begging for information. They have made a very clear statement. Please, public, now that you have this guy's name, send us in tips. Send us anything you have on this guy. Yeah. Which was interesting to me. It it was interesting. It was interesting. I agree with you. I agree with you. I don't completely understand it. Uh, I know that just recently we covered uh, the text messages, which are completely unconfirmed. I have no idea if they're Steve, but in somewhere in those text messages, uh, it says that law enforcement was watching Brian Koberger in PA in Pennsylvania before he even moved out here. Uh, if that were true, don't you think they would have this stuff already? Right. Like he was under FBI surveillance in Pennsylvania before he ever came to Washington. Yeah. Yeah. You would think if he were under surveillance, like there would be so much more. Uh, that's what I'm thinking too. There'd be no doubt about the car. There'd be no, if you're under surveillance, people are legitimately watching you. They probably got trackers on you. Like they know where you are at mm -hmm. all times, usually. Unless they stopped surveilling him and then he did this, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. You think his behaviors would be increasing leading up to this, not decreasing. There's that escalation, like with Rex Huberman. They arrested him early because they saw escalation. They knew he was about to attack again. You know what's interesting? And this just dawned on me. So, you know, Saeed coming through Banfield was walking down Banfield. And when he gets stopped, he tells the cop, oh, I... I, I can just go back to my apartment and he points back the direction he literally just came. So then where was he going? I don't know. Me neither. It makes me feel like, could that have been a, a fifth lookout person? And they s saw lights and they're watching these guys and like, do we need to know what's going on. Something's up and we can't we can't walk down yet. So he, you know, he walks down there intentionally because he gives a he gets a fake name. Right. Remember? Yeah. He gives a fake name. Which is really weird. It's really strange. Unopened alcohol, like the perfect setup to be talked to. You know? Like he's just out partying. He's but he's not drunk. He doesn't have open alcohol containers. Correct. Gives a fake name. Yep. And then walks back the direction he just came. He's wearing Vans. Yeah. He's got bushy eyebrows. Yeah. And he gives a... Dude, I don't... <clears throat> that is so suspicious, giving a fake name 
when that is what is happening up at that house. Like, I, I hear you. And now there's a connection suspicious. with him and David, too. That is very, very, very coincidental, you guys. Like I that I'm he paid hard, him that night. Yeah, I'm having a hard time because people have always felt like there was something strange with that interaction. But yeah. now we see that there is a literal connection to one of the two Davids that have known issues with Ethan Chapin. Which you guys will have seen by now. Steve Gonsalves coming out and saying, like, I, I don't understand how somebody could do that to a man, you know, with Ethan. Listen, if you're watching us and you believe 100 percent without a doubt, Brian Kohlberger is guilty. Help me understand how you can look at this and still feel like there can't there's no doubt. I just have a very hard time because one story makes more logical sense up front to be able to look at this and be like, oh, okay, like those dots connect, you know, I can, I can see the story in a linear fashion. Uh, and then I can comp compare it to Brian Koberger's where sure I could see how that could be the case. Uh, however, we just don't have any evidence showing any of that story with Brian Koberger. Yeah. That, and it's really strange that there is no confirmation. He was there with the phone or anything, but we do have confirmation. There's four people walking from the house. Right, which are Area. mentioned in the 4chan post before anybody even knew about that video, you guys. And yeah, reminder, the PCA wasn't out when these 4chan well, posts were coming out. That. They're describing the crime. And the, we didn't know nothing. 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 Yeah. We knew absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And these posts came out and knew so much. Like, they know so much. We even it's confirmed disturbing. that Sigma Chi called Ethan E. We, we and did. in the, the 4chan post, they were referring to him as E. They were. They sure were. So I just, I have a hard time reading those posts and not, like, I, do, I implore you, if you are still doubting that these 4chan posts are somehow connected to this crime and you have not read through them yourself, Go read through them. Yeah. And and fully understand. And the real ones, okay? Not, there are some that have been faked. Like, about hiding in, you know, in Pennsylvania and it had some gory details. That is, from all accounts that we have found, yeah, it, is fake. Ignore um, the one that talks about, like, entrails hanging from, just, you'll know that overly gory ones, like, that's no evidence. Well, okay? and there's no evidence. It doesn't match up. Like the ID doesn't match up to who was posting on those dates. Um, yep. It's clearly fake. But go find the original ones. There are Reddit threads that contain all the original ones. And our first video and the recap that we just did, we post them on the screen. If you read those, like you have to remember, this is pre, -C pre -P PCA. This is only two weeks after the crime. This is before we knew half of what we know now. Yeah, like less than half. We yeah. we knew barely anything at that point in time. Um, we knew like somebody laid out a very workable theory before the PCA was out what, with connecting evidence details that could not be known pre PCA. Mm -hmm. I know. So, I know. so those facts make it, imp it makes it almost an impossibility for me to think whoever wrote that was not connected in some way. Yeah. It, yeah. It's there, almost impossible. To there's me. a lot of people that think <coughs> somebody think that one of the people involved wrote that. I think that is a possibility. I really do. I don't want to discount that because sociopaths need that. They they want the attention, okay? So if four the people notoriety, were, yeah. If four people were involved and one of them's a true psychopath, okay, a true psychopath, complete disconnection from uh, emotions and and uh, any sort of bond with with human beings in general, um, I could see them reaching out and doing that. I could totally see that. Yeah, because they want the credit. They want the credit. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Yep. Yep. And then if it's one of the Davids, uh, you know, David won, you know, certain things were said in front of everybody in that fight. So it would be no thing to come out and be like, oh, yeah, you know, they were Ethan was saying something about his shriveled manhood. Uh, so you could put that out there, you know what I mean? To try and throw people off like it's not you. Yeah. But um, uh, I I found all this evidence super interesting, you guys, because I, I tried to pull the best pieces of what I felt like supported this further that we didn't talk about in the last one. There's a lot of interesting things there. But what's weird to me is that the guy who paid David to, you know, the bushy eyebrow guy that paid David to that morning, he's not even in the same fraternity. He's not. He's not. Yep. So, um, which is interesting. It is. Um, I don't know what that could mean if the 4chan theory was true. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, according to the 4chan theory, one of those four people was a woman, was a girl. So, uh, clearly, if it's a girl, then that's they're not in Sigma Chi. So if it's four people. And then people, the third guy could not be in Sigma Chi, meaning correct. only these two guys from Sigma mm. Chi know. Mm. Mm. Yep. Yep. And the rest don't. Correct. And those two guys are gone. They are not at Sigma Chi anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And for anyone that didn't know that, they are they are no longer in that school anymore. After this happened, they they're gone. Um, social media lockdown, and not even just lockdown, literally deleted. Um, like all their posts uh went through and deleted them one by one and they're gone. So um, you know, I say this every video. I have no idea if Brian Koberger is guilty or innocent. I am going to judge and critique the investigation to the absolute best that I possibly can because I believe in our justice system in that way. And I believe that it needs to be scrutinized. And I believe that it is our job to scrutinize it. And I believe scrutinizing it makes it safer for everybody and makes it a better system overall. So for me, I think that it's my civil duty to do that, to create a safer civilization for everyone. So yeah. I have Brian Koberger could be involved in this. He could be guilty. And I, I'm okay with that. I would be super happy about that. Uh, he might not be guilty. I, I don't know. I don't know. But we're going to keep investigating. Yeah. And, I, you know, I also find it really difficult to explain a car like Brian Koberger's in the area, his DNA supposedly being on the knife sheath. Like those are things that are really hard to explain. Like I understand why people think he's guilty. I a hundred percent get it. Like I'm not, I thought he was guilty when I first read through the PCA. The only thing yeah. that changed it is really the cell phone. And then I started looking into everything. Then I and, started learning about DNA. And then I was like, Whoa. Yeah. When you find out that the cell phone, tower ping specifically are total BS is that was really when we started going down that rabbit hole and being like, well, really there's the possibility every single element of that PCA is BS. Yeah. There's a possibility here because there are holes and they are not giving supporting evidence that makes sense. Yep. Yep. So absolutely. But we're curious what you think. We're going to keep digging into this, you guys, and we'll come at it from a different angle next time we talk about it. I hope that we talked about some new information that you didn't know about in here, and uh, I want to know what you think about it. 